This is Democracy Now! I am Amy Goodman. A warning to our audience, this story contains graphic descriptions of police violence in Los Angeles, California, where officers recently killed three men within 48 hours. On January 2nd, officers gunned down a black man named Takar Smith in his home after responding to his wife's call for assistance when he experienced a mental health crisis. On January 3rd, Officers shot and killed a Latinx man named Oscar Sanchez, who is also facing a mental health crisis after they said he stepped toward them with a threatening metal object. On the same day, a 31-year-old black 10th grade English teacher and father named Keenan Anderson died after being repeatedly tased. The Los Angeles Police Department has released video showing officers tackling Anderson in the middle of an intersection, after they responded to a traffic accident, as he begged for his life, saying, they're trying to George Floyd me. It shows an officer electrocuted Anderson. Uh, the, it showed the officer electrocuting Anderson with a taser for nearly 30 straight seconds, as several others pin him to the ground face first. He was then tased again. Police say he died four hours later after suffering a cardiac arrest. Los Angeles's new mayor is Karen Bass. She's called the footage of Anderson and the two fatal shootings this month deeply disturbing. Anderson's sister, Dominique Anderson, spoke Tuesday at a news conference outside Los Angeles City Hall. If you continue to blame the victim and not hold officers accountable, why would they ever stop killing us? For more, we go to Los Angeles, where we're joined by Keenan Anderson's cousin, Patrice Cullors. Yes, Patrice Cullors, co-founder of Black Lives Matter and founder of Reform LA Jails, educator, abolitionist, author of When They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir, and an abolitionist handbook, 12 Steps to Changing Yourself and the World. Patrice, I want to start off with our deepest condolences to you and your family on the death of Keenan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Can you tell us what happened, what you understood took place? <clears throat> well, on January 5th, I was notified by one of my cousins that Keaton had passed. But on January 6th, another cousin sent me an uh, NBC article um, naming Keenan as a suspect. Uh, it was obviously the LAPD press release that was um, offered to news stations um, and that my cousin had been tased and then died four and a half hours later. Um, in that text message, my cousin said, Patrice, the cops killed our cousin. And uh, the last two weeks have been a nightmare. Um, it's felt like all the years of fighting police violence and officer-involved shootings or officer-involved killings have, has now reached my doorstep. And um, many of us at the local level are calling on our elected officials to uh, change the way they deal with traffic stops. We believe there should be no cops at traffic stops. Um, but more importantly, my family's grieving our loved one, someone who was a giant to us, someone who was not just um, Keenan Anderson. He was my cousin. He was a sibling. He was um, a mentor to school. Uh, to to his students and and so much more. So, can you tell us about um, as you see it reconstructed? And I also want to ask what you think, Patrice, of the video being shown of Keenan being tased repeatedly. Well, you know, our many of our family members saw the video before it went live to the public, and um, it's heavily edited. So one of the things we want is the unedited footage. Um, there's no context in that video. My cousin had just gotten to a car accident. Um, and so uh, obviously, if you've ever been in a car accident, you're, you're, you're disoriented. Um, and so there's a lot of context that's missing. But then I think those last few minutes of the video of him being tased, um, obviously to death, was probably the most disturbing for me um, to witness because it's like he knows they're trying to kill him and he yells out, they're trying to George Floyd me and they did. And that imagery of him 
um, those last minutes of his life are are very painful to to hear and and visualize and um and 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 think about given that he was such a beloved human being um to no no human being deserves to die in fear um to die um publicly humiliated and without their dignity you have questioned why it was necessary for armed police to show up at a collision. Um, the Guardian newspaper cites national data that shows roughly 10 percent of killings by police each year start with a traffic encounter, Patrice. That's correct. I, I couldn't help but think about Philando Castile um, and how he would be alive right now if he wasn't stopped. Um, at a at a, a four traffic stop by a cop, I think about so many other black people like Sandra Bland, who would be alive right now. My cousin, Keenan Anderson, who would be alive right now. Um, we have to reevaluate the use of police at traffic stops um, here in Los Angeles. We're pushing our mayor and our city council to uh, really identify a new source of uh, professionals that are not armed, that are trained in crisis, to respond to traffic stops. So can you lay out all your five demands uh, that you are making right now, and also the significance of the mayor being Karen Bass? Yes. Um, mayor Bass uh, obviously has a long history um, in Los Angeles, California, she's from South LA. She started, you know, one of the largest um, South LA-based organizations, Community Coalition. Um, I I uh, knocked for her as she ran for assembly, um, and then eventually became Congresswoman woman. And as she's worked, you know, uh, alongside many of us activists, she's uh, always been accessible, and you know, she fought a hard campaign against Rick Caruso. And uh, we are grateful that Mayor Bass is our mayor. And I think um, now that she's the mayor, it, it's time for her and, and, and the rest of the city council to um, reduce the budget of the police. LAPD, we know, has receives um, billions of dollars um, through the city. And also, um, let's take this moment and not let Keenan die in vain. Um, we should have another opportunity to say the police killed somebody at a traffic stop we should be looking at where can we where can the city find dollars to specifically make sure that a cop is not the one responding to minor infractions that happen in the city of los angeles that is the primary demand that i want to lift up um, to your audience um, because i think it's an important moment right now uh, and I think it could be a national demand that many of us call on our local electeds to stop police officers, uh, um, um, to stop the use of police officers at traffic stops. Uh, but people can sign our petition. We have a color of change petition, um, tinyurl.com, uh, um, and it's uh, at the end of it is Keenan Anderson. And those are where you could find our five demands at the local level. We'd love for people to sign it. Um, nationally. But on this broadcast, um, the primary demand I want to lift up is the use of police at traffic stops. Um, and in L.A., uh, you have uh, city council members filing a motion to create an office of unarmed response. Another council member called for an expansion of the LAPD's mental evaluation unit and domestic abuse response team. And finally, um, if you could leave us with a description of who Keenan was. Um, Keenan was a mentor. He was more than a school teacher. He created programs for young people. Um, he worked alongside his colleagues to make sure his students were taken care of, not just academically, but also emotionally, um, also uh, physically. You know, I've heard so many stories. If he saw a young person that needed shoes, he would go and buy them shoes. He was always thinking about his young young people. He was a father. My cousin was a father. He was a beloved family member. 
and he um, will be missed um, is an understatement. Well, Patrice Cullors, again, our deepest condolences, cousin of Keenan Anderson, who died after being tased by police uh, in Los Angeles. Patrice Cullors is co-founder of Black Lives Matter and a founder of Reform LA Jails. Her books include When They Call You a Terrorist, Black Lives Matter Memoir, and An Abolitionist Handbook, Twelve Steps to Changing Yourself and the World.